Okay. Welcome to part two of this new series on sculpture and logic pro uh, logic pro today we're going to be talking about modulators and um oof, gotta get this going in the right mindset here live streaming is one of those really super fun things but there's a lot of moving pieces so dive right in and jump on board let's let's do some logic pro stuff today so if you've watched part one, we went over essentially the string, the materials made out of the objects which activated, and um, we started attaching it to the body. Well, today I'm gonna jump maybe ahead a little bit, but I think this is really important to understand because so many of the presets you'll be using use uh, these modulation tools. So we're gonna do this next in lieu of doing some of the other top element uh, components. So we're skipping the delay for the moment, the overall envelope for the moment, the wave shaper and the filter for the moment. But we're gonna come back to those in one of the next couple videos. Today, I wanna look at, uh, we're gonna start with the six modulator options. And um, we're gonna do this, a lot of this we're gonna be zooming in on the screen here so you can see this but uh, now in the upper right hand corner we have lfo1 lfo2 jitter vibrato velocity note on randomization and then control a and control b and so these are the six things that we're going to spend some time with today uh, and as always and i'll remind you because i know that we'll have people coming and going on the stream just let me know if you have any questions along the way. That's one of the benefits of coming into a live stream and doing this. So uh, let's start with the LFO1 and LFO2. Now, and actually let me do this. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit on this, but not much. Okay, cool. Uh, so with these, and we're looking down here in the bottom left-hand corner of Sculpture, uh, hopefully you can see my mouse. I think it's, I've turned it red so you could see it, but uh, it's still one of the things we're gonna face above all else is the interface. It's a complex interface. It has a lot of little pieces, um, but we're gonna talk about what these are. So the LFO or low frequency oscillator uh, really comes into play as one of the traditional synthesis modulation tools a repetitive wave shape that controls some other element on your sound. Uh, it could be that we want to do volume like vibrato. However, we have essentially an LFO that is just for vibrato. So that means uh, one and two here, we use them for different things. Um, but these one and two, uh, they're for most, I think they're essentially the exact same. There's just two of them, so we have more uh, flexibility. Um, but they have a lot of power packed into a little uh, package. And part of the reason there's so much here is because, again, with the theme of sculpture is creating an instrument which is both flexible, powerful, and yet organic in the sense that it mimics traditional acoustic instruments. Instruments which have chance and variation uh, and things of that nature. And so we wanna be able to mimic that to a certain degree. And so we end up with things like the phase knob, which we're gonna look at in just a minute, which uh, really does some interesting things. It allows us to use this LFO in ways that not every instrument easily can do. So that's what we're gonna be looking at first is uh, this LFO. Okay, so. Uh, back up to the right part of the screen. We have our waveform uh, options, which are sine wave, triangle wave, sawtooth wave, rectangular unipole, rectangular bipolar, or unipolar, uh, sample and hold, sample and hold with lag, sample and hold from control A, and filtered noise. So pretty standard set of these. Sine wave, of course, just an up and down motion. You can see that the shape right here. So if you want to look at any of these, it'll 
show you graphically what we're looking at in terms of the shape. Sample and hold, of course, is randomized. Uh, this one, lag, means it's randomized but smooth between each of them. And then this one from Control A, we're going to look at Control A in a minute, and then filtered noise. So each of these um, useful in their own way. Let's look at sample and hold for a moment. Now, down here in this section, we have two targets that we can assign each of these two. Uh, so right now we set up the, the LFO, the wave shape is all we've done. Let's go and turn on the first destination from this, and we'll leave it to pitch, um, because I do think that that's useful. Let's turn off LFO2, make sure we don't have anything else on that will conflict. Okay, good. Um, so it's turned on to pitch. Great. Uh, and then we have the amount. So we can say how much do we want this to do. Do we want this to go all the way up or be at zero? And then let's just push a note here. And I think I've got another sound happening out there. Let's turn that off. Should just be, oop, the wrong one. As much as I want strings constantly playing in the background. Pitch changing randomly. So that's the sample and hold function. And then we have the rate. So we can do this a few different ways. One of them is a free form rate that um, we just set as a frequency, a hertz, that's uh, cycles per second. So that's 13 uh, oscillations per second. Or we can sync this, let me go back to there, uh, to the tempo. So we could say we want it to be like 16th notes. Okay, so it's changing the pitch according to the, the tempo of the project. We do have some other options that are down here. And uh, these go a little bit deeper. We have the curve, the envelope, and the phase. And that's what we're going to look at next, each one of these. And then we'll get more into the target section. And we have a modulation shore, uh, source right in the middle there. Um, okay, so with these... Um, what we want to look at first would be uh, the curve knob. And so this is changing the shape of modulation waveforms. So... I always think of this as like a skew function, um, but if we did this with sine wave, um, then what we're looking at, a value of zero means it's just a sine wave. Um, a value above that, it's changed into like a rectangular type wave. And um, if we go below, uh, we have really the the slope at so that is a skew it's like the slope at the zero crossing um, is changed its shape i don't know if this actually it does so you can see that in the little graph there so you can actually see exactly what's happening with the curve there we go so it's like a little burble And of course, if we do this with other ones, you're going to see exactly what it does, which is kind of nice. And I don't know, see, sample and hold. It is doing a little bit there, but I don't really see graphically. I don't really hear much in either, so we're going to 
going to just go with it. Okay, and then we have the envelope, uh, which allows us to change the fade in or fade out, essentially. But you can hear at the very beginning. So it like it waits a little bit. You can see the it, you know the the millisecond reading there. It starts full and then it slowly goes away. So you can really adjust that, which is kind of cool. And then the phase, I think, is one of the important ones of all of this. Um, this knob allows us, goes between mono and, and poly, so monophonic and uh, polyphonic. And um, what that does mean, it means that this LFO can either be independent on each voice that you're playing or they can be looped together. So I'm gonna pull this to mono. So we'll go to sine wave for a second. This is still on pitch. Let's slow it down quite a bit. So when it's in polyphonic, uh, those it's able to act independently per voice and you end up with a lot of different things. I think this really... I'm under the impression that... Let's get that down to... both off just a little bit it's not exactly sunk together but the phase does it does change how the actual voices from voice to voice are controlled via this cool that's the starting place with the lfo1 as you can see a ton of information in a small little place we're not even done yet we have to look at the via so it could be um Control one. Let's do a mod wheel for via. So what that means is I can set the amount to zero, for instance, the via to 100%, and then if I use the mod wheel, which is what I set this to, that anytime I push the mod wheel, it's going to actually engage this. So with the mod wheel in the center, or at the bottom, and then I add the mod wheel, So we can go back and forth between turn that on and off. And of course we could use 
uh, velocity or key scaling or the you know foot pedal or whatever we want to do with control a which we can set up separately Whew. okay so then um, in addition to that we also have uh, a rate modulation so this one is a little different it adjusts the rate and um, we could do a similar thing with the mod wheel let's turn off this one off of the via So essentially with the mod wheel, I can choose to increase the rate uh, or keep it the same. Let's do this with sync for a minute. So this is with the default one bar rate. I'm going to push the mod wheel all the way up and back. And let's do... start the song but that means that we can have control over the rate we can do a via for the amount towards the destination I mean we're looking at modulation upon modulation now um, the it's really clear that what we don't have in sculpture is some sort of matrix to help us understand just like in alchemy you have to go to each one of these things to see what's happening and keep track of that yourself but it is a really powerful LFO, and we have the ability to send that same LFO to two places. Cool. And this LFO to two places, so really it's like a, a you know, a four for two kind of deal. Um, and the LFO one and LFO two are, are the same. That's a, a lot of information about that. Uh, let's look at jitter for a moment. Now jitter is uh, really cool, I think. It's a, essentially a randomizer, again, going to four destinations. Um, but many sounds, and this is what the manual points out. This is kind of how I envision as well. Um, it's like a little bit of randomization can go a long way when you're trying to get an instrument to sound like an actual instrument, right? So it could be that there's just a teeny bit of pitch variation but we have all of our object information here too we have our pickup locations and pickup information wave shape information filter information so each of these things we can just do a little bit of randomization let's do for instance um, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna initialize the setting And so let's turn on and do a little bit of string stiffness. Let's pull this more to nylon. Just adds a little bit in there of a little warble. Let's do media loss. Pull that up just a hair. If you're emulating a guitar, uh, you can definitely use something like this where, you know, it depends on how firm the finger is placed on the fretboard. Uh, so you could emulate a human touch to this a little bit. I think you come up with some great results. And we have four of these, obviously two different rates um, but four different targets. 
And so you can come up with a lot with these. Uh, I think it just sounds great as a very small little nuance uh, what you can do with this. So pick up position. Let's turn off that. Yeah, I think we're... If you're listening to headphones, you can probably hear that little stereo image enhancement. Pretty cool. I like it. Jitter becomes a terrific way of adding a little bit of randomization to everything. Vibrato, really straightforward. This is just something to add some vibrato to your project. And um, I think it's, it's really useful in, in that sense. It's just something that... And of course it has a via setting, which means we can do this through Um, the vibrato control setting. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Has the same phase option, which means it's going to be, you know, uh, either each note kind of doing their own thing, some randomized settings in the middle, and then the, you know, everything is locked with the same vibrato in the mono mode. And the curve changes the same as we had with the LFO. This is essentially an LFO just dedicated to vibrato. Let's turn it all the way down. We don't need anything. Hello, Gigadeth, thank you for that. You're a little bit late, but we've been starting off slow with the audience, um, but not slow with the information. Uh, we've done the LFO1, LFO2, Jitter, and Vibrato. We're moving on to the velocity part of modulation. This one has something which I think, um, I don't know where else I've seen this. So any of you watching, put it in the, in the chat if this is something you've seen someplace else. But um, this, I think, is one of the keys to this instrument sounding more natural. And I don't know, I'm gonna actually look real quick um, with blown instruments if anybody is using this. I hate that I have to keep on going back to it. Doesn't, I don't even know if they're used. Oh, they are. So here's one Cosmic Lead. Oh, okay. So oof. we'll see if we have some others here. I'll tell you more about what it is in a second. I'm just trying to see how often the programmers actually used it. This is the one where I would have guessed. Okay, so what we have, we're going to look at the note on random. So this is a randomizer which um, randomizes the target when you first start the note. Playing the note every single time. The object one position and the object two position are slightly moved each time. You don't see it up there, but they are. What you get is just like the embouchure of a brass player. That's like the lips touching the mouthpiece. Every time it's slightly different, we get a randomization at the beginning of each note.
nothing sounds quite like that on any other instrument. Or, sure, you probably can program it to do that, but nothing is as easily identifiably uh, just efficient as certain sounds in sculpture as it is when you use the note on random and you target something like the object positions uh, or the pickup positions or, I mean, even... I wouldn't do pitch with this, but um, certainly you could do some filter things if you wanted to. But just the the positioning of the objects on the string in relationship to the the actual pickup objects just gives it a little different uh, sound every single time, and it's so cool. Um, the other thing we have is the uh, velocity modulation. Um, and so this is also super useful. Um, and this, let's see. So essentially this just turns velocity into a modulation a source uh, in a really efficient way. Now I believe there's other ways on many instruments to do this, but um, what we're doing is, is taking the velocity and then targeting one of these things. So um, I don't have a, a keyboard velocity sensitive attached right this second. Um, so I can't demonstrate that as easily. But um, I might be able to... Let's go up an octave. Less velocity. So what we're doing, the higher the velocity, we're controlling the object to strength parameter, which is this knob right up here. So the strength parameter is going up with more velocity and down with less velocity, but it's not changing um, the noise parameter of object one, and it's not changing the disturb parameter of object three. It's just changing the blow parameter of object two. What that means is it's emulating how when a brass player plays louder, um, the timbre and the, the overall harmonic content changes. And so we set the velocity so that the higher goes, the more that happens. Um, another sense, subtractive synth, it may be that we set a, a velocity parameter to control like the filter uh, so that it gets brighter as you play louder. The other thing we're doing with velocity target number two is uh, controlling the variation knob, um, which is on the side here. This knob, we're controlling that one so that it also um, goes up as you play louder and down as you play softer. So between the note on random, which is changing the object positioning for, one, uh, for object one and object two, every single time you play, it's doing a slight amount of random, and then the velocity triggering the object to strength upwards and the object to variation parameter upwards as you play louder, then you end up with this really dynamic instrument. This is just the beginning. Obviously, if you're like, I don't really like how that sounds, the overall instrument. Well, we just pulled up a preset and we're messing with stuff. You can change so much of this uh, as you want to go. And we're going to look at the wave shaper, the filter, and the other effects in a subsequent video. But all of those things play into the overall sound. We're not necessarily locked into it. So for me, the velocity target, the note on random target, um, these two, the velocity and the note on random, are just so critical to one of the strengths of this instrument and making it sound just so dynamic when you want to do this. And we'll, 
we'll go back. I want to actually mess with this with some examples in just a few minutes, but let's cover the last thing, which is control A and control B. Uh, these are essentially uh, just tools that we have to continue doing additional uh, control. And um, we, you know, we're looking at these, I think, let's pull up, I'm going to pull up my notes for a second. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So really, these are just two different discrete modulation targets. And I don't know. Let me look one other place down here for a second. Oh, right there. Control A, Control B. That's what I was thinking right there. So um, we can do this with any of these. So it's just a way to incorporate uh, two external controllers, essentially, um, and that makes it super nice. So we can actually come in and decide which of these external things we want, and um, then we decide where they're going. And um, I think the only other thing there, the continue or note on buttons, uh, select either continuous modulation or modulation value that is updated when a note on message is received. Okay, cool. So essentially just to flex. Um, you can just make them do whatever you want and, and assign them how you want. But they're assigned down at the bottom here. Whoa, okay, cool. Um, I would ask if there's any questions, but um, we're oh, we're a bigger group now. We're getting there. Um, any questions? Make sure you put them in the chat because I won't, we're going to do some demonstrations here. I think I'm going to save the envelopes for the the time when we do the morph pad, which is another future video. But I do want to go over some more examples of some of these other ones that we have. Okay, Gigadessa, stupid question. Tremolo picking uh, a guitar without machine gun effect. Sculpture as a simulated guitar DI into a distorted amp sim. Uh, Ramstein in the box. Let me think. What? So tremolo picking of a guitar. Hmm. Um. So obviously, I don't know if I would reach for this tool necessarily as that part of it, the tremolo thing. Um, speaking about the fast 16th, I, I would probably, so I use, when I'm doing uh, any sort of fake guitar work, um, I'm definitely still using sculpture. And um, I did a little bit of a demo with this the other, you know, yesterday when I did this. Let me just show you an example. But I don't think I would do some of that here. Um, I would probably still use one of like the stomp boxes at this point. But let me again, just because I know we're going to get a little different audience in both of these days. I'm using the scripter to just give me a slight amount of guitar strumming. Um, always. Okay, so say we got that just as a basic strum. Um, reason is I'm even worse at nice. I, you know, I keep on, people ask me what my instrument is and I say computer. Now I used to be an instrumentalist, but um, I much prefer working with, you know, non-musicians in some situations. But let me, let's see, off the top of my head, um, I'm not exactly sure.
I'm not exactly sure how I would go about getting that a sound exactly. Um, but I wonder if part of what we're looking at here, so let me turn off that scripter for a second. <laughs> So there's a few different ways I would probably, so I'm just going to approach this, not exactly with what you have in mind, but just talking about if I wanted to have like that guitar note, just repeat over and over and over to have it not sound like it's a robot. Um, I'm assuming that's partly what you're looking at. Um, one of the things I'm going to do right off the bat is put on uh, arpeggiator just so I can... I mean, that's pretty robotic. Let's do, so position of object one, that's the pick sound. And then let's do variation on object one as well. just so we get so the timing is still too good you're totally right about that let's see what we have i don't think we have too much we can do with the timing just trying to think my way through that real quick because it may be what I end up doing um, is something that happens slightly after we record. Um, but let me think about this for one second. Amp, let's do it before the amp. Let's do delay, sample delay. Oof. <laughs> It's not going to let me learn. Ah, so I can't send that one to that. Let me try one. So what I'm going to do is try to just randomize the delay very slightly. Um, I can't help myself. I'm just going to play. Um, I would probably find a way to do the delay the same on both or just do the... Oh, link. There we go. I just need to link them. <laughs> Yeah. 
I like it. So working through backwards, I love how if you think, okay, guitar player is going to do this or do that, we can always kind of reverse engineer to a certain degree. Um, I don't think, so I don't think like the jitter on here is too bad. It doesn't do an actual timing function, but we figured it out just using the delay, adding a little randomizer, um, the arpeggiator, so I don't have to play the notes over and over and over again. Um, and then we're off to the races. I think that was pretty slick, actually. Um, am I actually using this randomizer? No. Oh, I'm using it just for velocity. I didn't need to do that. Let's turn it off for a second. So we're going to turn that off because that was just me almost trying something. And then if I really want, um, I can always come down and do, well, strength. That's probably the one I would really do. Something like that. Okay, cool. We ended up with one jitter, just doing a little strength at the end there. But the real thing we were doing um, with this is uh, velocity. I think we had that on object three strength, which I think that came with it. But I turned on the note on random for those to, to bring a little bit of difference to each of those sounds. Um, because anytime you're repeating, it's not going to sound exactly the same. But the actual, the timing thing was a modulator. Just doing so very little. Uh, adjusting the sample delay. So that there's a little different delay each time uh, there's a note going. So it's sunk essentially to tempo. 16th notes, it's sunk to tempo. Um, and let's turn off the jitter for a second. And let's turn off the randomization. That's actually a, the beginning of a new video I need to make this week for guitar players <laughs> because that I think actually does some things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Thanks to GigaDeath for like bringing the best out of our live stream today, as always. Cool. Um, but let's go back into sculpture, but I'm going to save that sculpture for a moment. Um, because what do you do when you come up with something that I want to remember for later? We save channel strip setting as um, guitar demo settings. And then I'll save that so I can pull it into another session later on. Um, so let's do a new track, new instrument sculpture. And okay, so we were going to be looking just at a few more examples of some of those things. I do want to see um, in the blown instruments, we got to mellow brass, but I want to hear a couple more of these. So 
here's one huge weakness of sculpture, in my opinion. When you have all these modulation things going on, there's really no indication of, you know, where, what, what's happening with this. So I turn it on or off, nothing happens. And visually, I can adjust this amount, nothing happens. So this uh, note on random is changing the variation amount of the wave shaper. And uh, you can maybe hear it, but there's no visuals. And I wish there was a visual cue for this. I'm listening to that and I'm not hearing like an exact exact replica every single time a note plays. I'm hearing something that's a little bit different every single time. And that's one of the, the real beauties of this randomizer. <laughs> even though the sound is whatever it is the actual thing i'm playing on a freaking computer keyboard the typing keyboard <laughs> which is why the velocities are all the same. But it's still incredibly musical. sound i want to see let's see i'm work. i've got this song why is everything muted let's cancel Well, that's exciting. Oh, let's do K. Well, that's bizarre our world. I'll have to figure that out. Something has crashed something here. I love it. Everything's grayed out. I wonder, it was playing just a little bit ago, so I don't think it's anything to do with that. What would have caused that? I'm, I'm not gonna figure it out right this second, but geez Louise, hitting too many keys all at once. That is a problem when sometimes doing um, the typing keyboard. Okay. I think this is a great place to recap. Um, we're about 50 minutes into this. So if you're watching right now and you missed the beginning, there was quite a bit of in interesting things at the very beginning. Um, uh, so go check out the beginning of this where we did LFO one jitter vibrato velocity node on random and control a and b there's probably a lifetime worth of like actual learning when you want to use those things um, we need to get to the envelope one and two plus the morph pad still which we're going to be doing and then we are going to actually get to the rest of the top uh, parameters as well the wave shape uh, shaper tool which i love that as a distortion unit the filter which is pretty traditional 
the delay section, which is pretty normal. We're going to look at the envelope, the spread, the level, plus level limiter. And then we have a couple advanced topics to cover with this. One of them is surround sound. Uh, this is a surround sound instrument, one of the few truly surround sound instruments in Logic or anywhere. Um, there are other ones, but this is definitely one of the ones I like. And then um, we're going to talk about side chaining sounds into here and using it like a vocoder. So um, we're just still getting scratching the surface with this. Gigadeth says, I don't think you can imagine how much I learned today. This is one of the most inspirational hours for a very long time. As always, thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, keep coming back because we got more stuff to do with this. We're, it's like the, um, the morph tool on this with the, uh, the moving envelope is, I mean, you probably already know about it, but that's one of the things that blew my mind the most with this whole instrument and uh, continues to make it so that this tool is something that very few other instruments could even dream about being. So um, I think we're going to, today's um, Tuesday, I'm trying to fit a bunch of stuff in because, um, I mean, perfectly honest, the end of the semester for my teaching at the university is really the end of this week and next week. Uh, and then I've got like two weeks with children home from school and um that there's not gonna be a lot of streaming or video making <laughs> during that period of time and so i'm going to try to cram in a bunch before that and then uh, we'll pick back up right after the first of january um, because that's when uh, things go back to normal but um so come back expect a lot of content this week and next uh and then you know a black hole for, for a couple of weeks, so. Thanks Bjorn for watching. Thanks everybody else. Um, especially thanks Gigadeth because you're a huge supporter of the channel. And Bitamin, it's gonna be posted so you can come back and see the whole thing. It's um, maybe not the, the most exciting of one of my tutorials, but it certainly had a lot of information about the LFOs and other modulators. And then really the next video is gonna be the one with the morph pad. And um, this morph pad, it can do things. It can do things that, um, that all of everybody should be aware of and uh, in your music sonic explorations. Okay, see you later, everybody. Um, see you hopefully tomorrow.